Joe, would you stand up straight so I can get this hem even? Mom, don't you think it's a little too long? They're wearing them much higher this year. Well, one year they're wearing them higher, and the next year they're wearing them lower. I leave mine the same way. Every other season, I'm in style. <laughs> Things weren't during the material. <laughs> you know, it's mighty quiet down in the lobby. Yeah, I noticed that, too. Strange. Usually when Uncle Joe, Sam, Charlie, and Floyd get together for poker, you can hear Uncle Joe arguing and hollering all over the hotel. <laughs> well, maybe Uncle Joe's winning. No, then the other three would be hollering. <laughs> what, what's going on down there? Now, Sam, as chief of the ump quads, you sign the treaty first. Then can we play poker? Sign the treaty. Well, there's nothing red on here. That don't matter. It's just a reenactment. Well, I like to know what I'm signing. Sign it. <laughs> and hold your tommyhawk up higher. <laughs> now, you pass the treaty to Charlie, and he signs it. Do I sign my own name? No. You're supposed to be Delbert Baldwin, the first president of the CNFW Railroad. Well, he's signing it. You light the pipe of peace. Don't put the tommyhawk down. Well, I need both hands to light the pipe. How do you spell Baldwin? B-A-L-D-W-I-N. Or this thing won't work, Joe. Can't I use a match? The Indians didn't have no matches. <laughs> well, they didn't have no ballpoint pens, neither. <laughs> okay, for now you can use a match. How do you spell Delbert? D E. Just sign it, D. Baldwin. Ooh, what kind of tobacco is this? It smells like burning radish tops. You know, I think Delbert's right. It does smell just... Did you hold up your Tommy Hawk? Need any more radish tops for the pipe, Joe? That does. <laughs> What's that awful smell? Sam smoking radish tops. Sam is smoking ra... What's going on here? Evening, Kate. Good evening, fellas, but we're... Now, we're rehearsing the reenactment of the signing of the treaty between the Umpqua Indians and the CNFW Railroad. Treaty? I don't think I ever heard of it. Well, it's a matter of documented historical fact. The Indians signed over a piece of land near Dead Man's Curve for the right of way of the cannonball. Oh, you mean you found it written in a history book? No, he saw it in one of those cards that came packed in the carton with these plastic tomahawks he got stuck with. I didn't get stuck with them. You've still got them after three years. If that ain't stuck, I don't know sticking. <laughs> the sooner you fellas learn your parts, the sooner Kate can start raking in the money. Wait a minute. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, but what's all this got to do with booting me into the upper brackets? Kate, what are the two things that all people hunger after? To see the reenactment of a historical event and to eat fried chicken. From such simple beginnings have come your biggest flops. You realize how many hundreds of history-hungry folks are going to flock here to see the reenactment? No, how many? Thousands. And after they've seen the reenactment, they'll be duck soup for a chicken dinner. At two and a half ahead, with dessert and coffee and one of my treaty-signing tommyhawks thrown in. Do you mind if I ask one teeny-weeny little question? Sure. What is it? Why was Sam smoking radish tops? <laughs> hey. If you ain't going to be serious, we might as well forget the whole thing. That's the first sensible thing you said since I got here. I shall. <laughs> Kate, I guess the best way is to show you what's going to happen the day of the ceremony. Now, the lobby is packed. The chicken's frying. The people are milling about, and I hold up both hands for silence. Only one making any noise in here is you. Then we go ahead with the reenactment. Charlie here speaks the lines which I writ for him. No, it's my turn. Ugh. Me great Umqua chief of great Umqua tribe. Me gathered here today to welcome you with upraised, with upraised tomahawk, which we give them away free to all who sign up for chicken dinner at end of ceremony. You think it's a good idea to start the ceremony with a commercial? Please, Kate. Okay, Charlie. I am D. Baldwin, first president of the CNFW Railroad, and I am here to... Uh, to purchase the land from you Indians, which we would like to run over with our train. Kate, now you'll see the exact signing of the... Kate? What happened to Kate? She turned green and ran in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, Chief, I'm ready to go. Oh, good, good. Benlow, I don't know of another man in our organization who possesses your unique qualifications. You're mean, conniving, relentless, sneaky, hard-hearted, underhanded, and unscrupulous. 
In other words, you are a first-class fink. Well, thank you, Chief. It's nice to know that I'm appreciated. But that's why I don't understand why you've done this terrible thing to me. Why, Chief? Why? Well, what have I done? Appointed you to preside at the annual stockholders meeting in my absence. Yes, but holding the meeting at the Shady Rest Hotel had shaken my faith in voodoo. After all those pins I stuck into my Kate Bradley doll. <laughs> when I first mentioned the idea, I could see your beady little eyes light up like a firebug at a 12 alarm fire. I could see the wheels grinding in your crooked little brain, picturing how you were going to bulldoze the stockholders into voting my favorite little train, the Hooterville Cannonball, out of existence, thereby ruining the lives of everybody in that happy little valley and driving Kate Bradley into bankruptcy. I must admit, the happy thought did flit through my mind. <laughs> like a bat through a damn cave. But it seemed like you'd played right into my hands. After all, if those stockholders rode on that liver-shaking bucket of bolts to the meeting at the Shady Rest, it wouldn't take them three seconds to blackball it into oblivion. And they would have. If I hadn't arranged to hold a meeting after lunch. Oh, after one of Kate Bradley's famous chicken dinners, with corn on a cob, hot biscuits, home churn butter and apple pie, you couldn't get the Republicans to vote the Democrats out of existence. <laughs> or vice versa. No, yeah, well, you better leave, you'll miss your train. And I'm sorry I had to sink to your level, Bedlow. You sank below my level. If you don't mind my saying so, Chief, you are the sneakiest, most underhanded, dirty, pool-playing rat I've ever run up against. Well, coming from you, Bedlow, that's like getting the Nobel Prize. <laughs> in the train. Hey. Yes, Uncle Jim. I thought you'd like to know. Uh, I guess the train's in. Now, what were you going to say? Nothing. One of these days, you and me's going to meet head on. Guess who's going to back down? <laughs> Cannonball's doing here. Floyd and Charlie don't usually make their two o'clock stop here until 3.10. What time is it? 1.30. I don't like it. I got a premonition of trouble. What's that dog barking at? From the tone of his bark, it's either a cat or a skunk. Help! Help! Now get away! That's a skunk. Bedlow, Kate, when you get a premonition, you don't fool around. Where are you going? To call off the dog. What's the hurry? Why not have lunch first? This is Bradley. That's a vicious animal. Yes, but a very good judge of character. What dirty low-down scheme brought you here this time, Bedlow? Nothing, I'm sorry to say. I'm here to discuss some legitimate business. Yeah, well, let's do it out here. Save Aaron out the lobby. <laughs> Joe, don't make rude remarks to Mr. Bedlow until he says his piece. And then you can make your rude remarks. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I am instructed to make a deal with you for the Shady West Hotel for the annual CNFW stockholders meeting. You'll be required to, to serve lunch. Based on previous turnouts, I should expect about 75 people. I'm prepared to pay you, well, uh, $2 a person. Oh, well, if you're prepared to pay $2, that means you've been authorized to offer four. I'll give you three. Three fifty. Make it three seventy-five, and they'll throw in a genuine Indian tomahawk with every lunch. <laughs> what? Uncle Joe, I don't think that Mr. Bedlow's interested in tomahawks unless he's sinking them in our skulls. Well, he ought to be. It's his railroad the Indian signed the treaty with. Treaty? What treaty? Yeah, where the Umpqua gave a hunk of right away for the cannonball. I never heard of any such treaty. Well, it's a documented historical fact. And since your meeting coincides with the anniversary of the signing of the treaty, you ought to make it an event folks would remember. Just because you're stuck with this junk, don't try to palm it off on me. Where does everybody get the idea I got stuck with these? <laughs> My final offer is $3.50 without the Tommy Hawk. That comes to approximately $265. Mr. Bedlow, knowing you from past sad experience, my instincts say pass it up. Kate. But my bank account says grab it. Here's a check from the company to bind the deal. It looks all right to me. Yes, it does. 
That's what worries me. Mrs. Bradley, I am humiliated to tell you that I had tried to figure out some underhanded way I could turn this transaction into a catastrophe for you, but unfortunately I've failed. But you'll keep trying. Scouts on him. <laughs> Mr. Carson, did you say that was the Umpqua tribe? <laughs> always said to me, I don't know of another man in our organization who's as mean, conniving, and underhanded as you are. Evans, you don't know what that means to me, to hear those words from the lips of our leader. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me have that report of yours again. Well, I looked through the files, sir, and, and I found a photostat of the Umpqua Treaty. The Indians never signed it. Wait a minute. That means for the past 65 years, the cannonballs were running on land still owned by the Umpquas. I'm afraid so, sir. Well, don't look so sad about it. How much land's involved? Well, it's a ten-foot strip uh, near the section known as Dead Man's Curve. Uh, right about here. <laughs> you know, Evans, if some sneaky, underhanded individuals to tell the Umquas about this, they'd probably want their land back. And that'd be the end of that antiquated piece of kindling wood known as the Shady West Hotel. Mom, do we have to do all these? Well, of course you do. They've been stored away for years. Well, why don't we just use paper plates? Because at three fifty dollars apiece, people are entitled to eat on good china. You mean like this one? Oh, Bobby Joe, be careful with that. Your father got me that on our honeymoon. I didn't know you went to Niagara Falls. We didn't. We went to Pixley. <laughs> the movie theater there gave them away on dish night. They gave away a different dish every week. Pikes Peak, Yellowstone Park, Grand Canyon. And two of San Francisco, before it shook and after. <laughs> but we only got the one, Niagara Falls. Why? Well, because there was no point in going every week. They changed the dishes, but not the picture. Hey, Mom, you're just putting us on. No, I'm not. Well, I can remember that picture like it was yesterday. The Revenge of the Redskins, starring Monty Blue. Gee, that sounds like an exciting picture. Why don't you tell us the story while you do the dishes? Well, you see, it was all about this company for just a second. <laughs> you trying to put me on? You girls wash the dishes. I got to figure out what I'm going to feed those stockholders. But, Mom, I have a date. With the dishes. You wash, you dry. Who's that? <laughs> seven o'clock. You know it took more than three hours to order all this stuff. Takes a lot of groceries to feed 75 people. It was nice of Sam to stretch our credit for all this. You gave him that deposit check you got from Bedloe, didn't you? No, that didn't even make a dent in the bill. Uncle Joe, you don't suppose that Homer Bedloe cooked up this story about the stockholders just so I'd order all this stuff and then be stuck paying for it? Okay, the deal I negotiated with Bedloe was foolproof. Now, the only thing you gotta worry about is if you got enough supplies. That's the least of my worries. I don't know. Do you think 40 chickens is enough for 75 people? <laughs> I ain't heard so much cackling on this train since the Ladies' Aid Society had their annual excursion to Pixley. Oh. One of the stockholders' chickens laid you a dividend. I know the lingo. How? How? I guess he speaks a different dialect. You, you fellas sure picked a mighty dangerous spot to set up housekeeping. Yeah, you better move your teepee. That's an Indian word. We no move. But you're blocking the train. The iron horse, no pass. You're trespassing. 
That wigwam smack dab in the middle of our track. Track smack dab on top our land. <laughs> this belong Umqua. No, I don't. Don't you fellas ever read the treaties you sign? Umqua never signed treaty. This land still belong us. Ungrammatical, but true. Homer Bedlow. I told you, Uncle Joe, I had an uneasy feeling something was going to go wrong. Mr. Carson, I owe you a debt of thanks. Me? What did I do? But if you hadn't mentioned the treaty, I wouldn't have thought to check our files and discover that our good friends still own this ten-foot strip of right away. Well, I didn't mention it for that reason. I mentioned it relative to being stuck with them tommyhawks. <laughs> and that isn't all we're stuck with. All that food for the stockholders' meeting. Corn, flour, 40 chickens. 31. I didn't get the windows on the coach closed quick enough. <laughs> Don't go to waste, Mrs. Bradley. The meeting will still go on at the Shady Rest Hotel. You mean they'll let the train go through? My dear Mrs. Bradley, don't you think we've imposed upon these patient savages enough by wrongfully using their land for all these years? Why, if they want to do, they could probably sue the railroad for several million dollars. Then why don't they? Because they were impressed with my honesty and coming to them and revealing <laughs> the treaty was never signed. They'll be satisfied as long as they now have their land back. Back. Back up the train, Charlie. Maybe Sam will take some of the groceries back. Mrs. Bradley, I told you the meeting will go on as scheduled. Yes, but if the train only goes this far, what are the stockholders going to do? Walk the 15 miles to the Shady Rest? Precisely. And after that long, dusty hike, they'll be sitting down picking at that beautiful luncheon that you prepared for them, hardly able to wait till they get down to business and vote the cannonball out of existence. Why, you no good sneaking varmint. I'd rather be called by the name my Indian friends have honored me with, Snake in the Grass. <laughs> Young brave, have a heap big trouble, light em fire. Bob, will you stop bugging me with that phony dialect? <laughs> Got a match? My son, the Indian. <laughs> to think that I, Fleet Eagle, the last great Umqua chief, could have fathered such a nudnik. <laughs> Why did I let you get me into this deal? Pop, it's the only way Bedlow would give us the exclusive franchise to sell Indian souvenirs in the CNFW's railroad station. Oh, my Bedlow snake in the grass. Hey, wait till I tell you or Uncle Louie you gave away his name. Pop, we need that franchise. We are stuck with the biggest inventory of, of Indian souvenirs in, in the history of the tribe. Uh, blankets, pottery, jewelry. If we don't find an outlet, we're all gonna end up back on a reservation doing beadwork. I don't trust Bedlow. Pale face, speak with forked tongue. How many times do I have to tell you? Indians don't talk that way. And Indians don't act this way. Listen, son, I grew up in this valley. I like the little train. And I don't like what we're doing. Pop, when it comes to making a buck, you got to forget sentiment. <laughs> Is this what they taught you at the Harvard School of Business? <laughs> oh, Mom, are we going to have to get up this early every morning to get to school? Now? Yes, you are. And Billy Joe better stop primping. You got a long walk to the county road to catch the bus. It won't hurt him. When I was a boy, I walked to school every day. How far? Across the road. <laughs> looks like that awful Mr. Bedlow finally won. Sure looks that way. Well, I hate to admit it, but I agree. Them Indians will be off the track by noon today. What makes you think so? I've got an idea. Back on your 10-foot reservation. We just want to go to town, buy food. You want food, you grow it on your own land. But... Yeah, you wanted it, now you got it. Stay on it. What now? Man, no big business. They can't stop me from buying food. Let me remind you, they have guns. Well, so have we. But theirs are not made out of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> we brought you a snack from the Hooterville Diner. Hey, what you got? Oh, hamburgers, roast beef sandwiches, potato salad, <laughs> boysenberry pot. <laughs> and four different flavors of soda pop. Well, that's nice. 
What? We just rode down there on the hand car. Uncle Joe and Mr. Drucker and Charlie and Floyd have them surrounded. They won't let them off the tracks. And the poor Indians are starving. And Uncle Joe and Mr. Drucker are standing there eating hamburgers right under their noses. It's the most horrible thing you ever saw in your whole life, Mom. We'll soon put a stop to that. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give those poor men some food. Kate, you're going to spoil everything. We had them just about to the point where they're going to let the cannonball through. Uncle Joe, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, and you too, Sam Drucker. Well, we didn't have no choice, Kate. The whole future of this valley is being fought out right here on these moth-eaten railroad ties. Well, there must be some other way to settle this than acting like inhuman beings. Come on in. Ten isn't locked. <laughs> I brought you some food. Oh, yeah. Come on. There's plates in there. I'll eat them later. <laughs> Madam, forgive my son. He really had good manners before he went to Harvard. May I fix you a plate? If you please. Oh. Here we go. Uh, thank you very much. It is more than we deserve for all the trouble we've caused you. Ma'am, if we don't cooperate with Bedlow, the tribe will go into bankruptcy. Can I have another chicken leg? Well, right there, good. Thank you. Where did you get this plate, Mrs. Bradley? Niagara Falls? Oh, at the Pixley Theater years ago. I got one, too. Did you see Revenge of the Redskin? Five times. <laughs> well, you must have sat through the whole set of dishes. <laughs> Isn't this a small world? If I remember correctly, those were the exact words that Monty Blue spoke as he and the government man rode out into the sunset at the end of the picture. Yeah. I wish this problem could be settled as easily as Monty Blue did it. Yeah. Wait a second. Why can't it? Genuine treaty signing Tommy Hawks right here. Excuse me. Yes, sir. How many, sir? Oh, no thanks. All I wanted to say was that I hope we have our meeting here every year. I ain't so sure we want to cater to another crowd of non-Tommyhawk buyers. <laughs> Answer remains the same as in last five telegrams. Yes, there is such a law on the books. Wilson and Price, attorneys at law. Are you convinced now you want to send another telegram? Yes, Mrs. Bradley, I admit defeat. The cannonball will continue to run. And uh, the umquas? They'll get their franchise to sell the souvenirs in our station. Would you mind speaking up? They'll get their franchise to sell the souvenirs. Oh. And, um, uh, what about all those tomahawks that Uncle Joe's stuck with? Oh, Mrs. Bradley, enough is enough. You know, I can't believe that the government would send a man to prison for 15 years merely because he tried to coerce the Indians into doing his dirty work. But you care to put it to a test? Who ever heard of such a law? The fellow who wrote The Revenge of the Redskins. You see, there was this big corporation using the Indians to put Monty Blue out of business. So what oh, he did Oh, please, was... Mrs. Bradley, don't let me listen to that corny plot again. Where are you going? Up to my room to soak. Mr. Bedlow, you forgot the other part of our bargain. There they are, Mr. Bedlow. It's going to take me a week to do all those dishes. Oh, well, you take your choice, Homer. A week at the Shady Rest or 15 years in jail. All right. Where's the dish rag? Right here. Ah, I'll, I'll do this one myself. Why? <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.